Greetings fellows, today the first video about my new little project, trying to convert this into something like this. A while ago I discovered the joy of playing that 8 wheeled tank in War Thunder, it's just a remarkable vehicle, with its road wheels which are all driven and also move while steering. I was like, I want a little copy of that for real, but with 8 wheels would be impossible for me to build. So I decided to use only six of them, with one rigid and also driven axle, and two that would do the steering job. Luckily, I collected already six wheels from the IWL Troll Berlin Roller, an old scooter from the 1960s. Just perfect. Two car steering rods between the steering knuckler and the spring supported arm because I was need for a movable connection. After that it was time for the middle axle. But wait, that thing broke down back in 2014. I did a repair, but since then only one wheel is driven alone. That's why I bought a new used spare part axle. With that spare axle I started to build the frame. As you can see, I tried different solutions to build the first suspension unit. Spiral springs weren't a good choice. My final design was using a single leaf spring instead. Well, I did some miscalculations. The frame was on one hand side a little bit too short. While testing the steering system for the first time, I discovered that I did something wrong. Nah, so it does not. <coughs> With a rolling chassis, the time finally had arrived to build in some engine. Took the engine from my old retired lawn tractor, bought on 2004 and about 18 years old. The engine is still running. It's funny that 16 years ago, when I was only 14 years old, I was cutting the lawn with it. See how much fun I had back then? Taking everything apart. And installing the engine on my new project. The pull side of the belt needs to be straight. It won't work if there's a pulley. Because the straight force from the engine don't want to go around corners. Well, looks like I was dreaming. Well, after I was finished with the reconstruction of the belt clutch drive system, I was finally able to test the whole thing on the street. Oh, I'm in neutral. Wait a moment. Here we go. Wow, it actually moves. Full throttle, max speed. At least it's working at all. That's kind of impressive, but sad at the same moment. Also, just look at that beautiful steering system. The front wheels as well the back wheels gracefully bow down while cornering that thing on the spot. Even the suspension is trying its best to remain that ground connection. A steering box I took one of those modern ones with an electrical power steering unit. Because I only needed that manual toothed gear I cut off the whole electric part. I am able to drive backwards the same way I am driving forwards. The gear selector is beneath the driver's seat. On the right hand side is forward, in the center neutral and on the left hand side backwards. While adding that gear selector to the differential gearbox a problem occurred. The drilling I wanted to use to bolt my gear selector down was a little bit too big. To reduce the play between bolt and hole, I simply used a piece of a radio antenna tube. After that, my bolt was firmly fixed. Perfect. But there's one big flaw of the whole vehicle. Because only the center axle is driven. I can easily get stuck if the underground is way too much uneven. 
Only the two front wheels have a brake system. Both wheels have their own brake bowden cable which are connected over the deflection roller on the brake pedal. That way both are always engaged simultaneously. While test driving I discovered an issue with the belt clutch transmission system. If I move the pulley by hand I became faster. I guess I have to change the belt size. I need one that is slightly wider. Well folks, I guess that's it. See ya. Now that I am certain that this thing works, I can rebuild everything. Because I just spot welded everything.